Aero bikes are all about raw speed, and they just keep getting faster. Today, we're going to have a look at the bikes that we think are going to be the ones to beat in 2024, both in the World Tour and the Town Sign Sprint, and there are plenty to choose from. With the UCI removing the 3 to 1 regulation, which prevented tubes from being more than three times deeper than their width, engineers have quite literally gone deeper in the pursuit of speed, and that has resulted in some really exciting bikes. While we might not have seen a huge number of new aero bikes in 2023, the bikes we do have are still undeniably leading the cutting edge and should be the go-to choice for anyone seeking pure speed. But beware, speed doesn't come cheap. We'll start with a bike that stirred up plenty of debate when it launched and is UCI Legal, the latest version of the Trek Madone. In the case of the Madone, the cam tail tube shapes were overshadowed by the bike's eye-catching isoflow technology. We think the majority of people are now pretty used to seeing the isoflow hole out in the wild, but what does it actually do? Well, Trek claimed that by removing the adjustable ISO speed system of the last Madone, the bike became both simpler and lighter. Combined with the use of 800 series OCLV carbon, the new frame weighs 300 grams less than the previous model. But of course, the cutout section was also created with aerodynamics in mind. Trek say it's a way to direct some high energy flow into a low energy region of the bike. What that means is the seat tube area creates a disproportionate amount of drag, and the hole helps dissipate this by adding what Trek call a jet of fast moving air. The new frame is claimed to be almost 20 watts faster than the last generation, which equates to 60 seconds per hour when ridden at 45 kilometers per hour. And that's a lot. When we tested the bike this year, we gave it our best aero bike award, thanks in large part to the frame technology and how it rides, but also because of the thought and effort that Trek put into making the handlebars work for every size of rider, meaning whomever climbs aboard this bike has the opportunity to be the best they can be. The Cervelo S5 is the bike the all-conquering Jumbo Visma have been racking up many of their victories on, and when you look at the bike, you can see why the S5 may have helped. The frame has typically deep aero profiles, a product of the relaxing of the UCI regulations. This is most notable at the head tube and the bottom bracket area. Elsewhere, the trailing edges of the tubes are aggressively shaped, while the rear dropouts have been simplified a little due to the frame being only compatible with electronic group sets. It comes with new reserve wheels that have differential rim profiles and save over 5 watts compared to the wheels previously found on the old S5. The front end has a funky handlebar that despite the radical Y shape without a conventional stem also has the benefit of reducing the system weight by a little over 50 grams. When we tested the bike, we really liked it, which is why it rolled away with our overall race bike of the year award. We loved how the bike handled in the corners, the sheer smoothness in ride quality and the undeniable straight line speed. It all came together, resulting in a bike which can do everything, everywhere, and do it fast. Having been out for around two years, the Scott foil still boasts some pretty impressive numbers. Scott claims the foil is 20% faster, 10% more comfortable, and 9% lighter than the outgoing version. Of course, like the other manufacturers, Scott took advantage of the UCI rule change and redeveloped the new foil, pushing right up to what's legal. That meant deeper cross sections for the tubes, as well as the fork crown being a little higher up from the front wheel, and the oversized head tube acting as a fairing, according to Scott. The bottom bracket also has been beefed up, while the seat tube now follows the arc of the tyre much more closely, before the seat post itself transitions to shoot straight upwards. The seat stays are designed to shelter the brake calipers, but they've also been angled at 10 degrees to force the steady airflow into the spinning spokes. While these changes and claimed improvements in speed, comfort and weight are all very impressive, we care more about what the bike is actually like to ride. Happily though, when we tested it, we found that the bike was incredibly fast and held its speed beautifully. It handled incredibly well and thanks to the seat post with the D-shaped cutout covered by a fairing, comfort and road chatter was greatly reduced. 
It may be slightly on the heavier side, but when considering that the foil was built to shine on flat roads, the extra few grams won't weigh heavy on the rider's mind. Like the new Trek Madone and many other bikes on this list, the Giant Propel Advanced SL is claimed to be both lighter and faster than ever before. However, it's not the increased claims in performance which make the Propel shine, because for us, it's the value of the bike that really makes it stand out. Compared to all the other bikes on this list, the Propel can be obtained for thousands less, but you still get to enjoy many of the same performance features across the entirety of the range. It's no surprise why the Propel went on to win our best value category in Race Bike of the Year, thanks to the bang for buck that this bike delivers. But putting cost aside, the performance metrics of the bike alone are still worth paying attention to. Giants say the Propel is 225 grams lighter than its predecessor, with the new advanced SL frame weighing 845 grams, with the complete frame set claimed to be almost 14% lighter than the previous model. To make the Propel faster, Giant used a combination of airflow simulation software, wind tunnel testing, and real-world application. The resulting aero system shaping led to what Giant described as truncated ellipse airfoil shapes across the down tube, seat tube, and seat stays, as well as a redesigned frontal area, an area, of course, which is crucial to the reduction of drag. The result is a bike that Giants say is 27 seconds faster over 40 km at 40 km per hour, thanks to a reduction in drag by more than 6 watts. But we think the cost savings this bike represents against its rivals might be even more impressive to the masses. Lastly, we want to give a special mention to the Specialized Tarmac SL8. It's famously not an aero bike, but is an all-rounder, since Specialized decided that separate aero and climbing bikes aren't necessary. But when it was released, the SL8 was claimed to be faster than the brand's previous aero bike, the Venge. So it stands to claim that the SL8 could be seen as being a better version of an aero bike. If it really is as fast or faster while combining lightweight and performance features, in theory, it should be providing everything the customer of an aero bike is actually after, apart from maybe a really wacky looking and eye-catching frame. Let us know down in the comments below, which of these bikes would you choose if money were no object? If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and we will see you again very soon.